Hello Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 pilots. Welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator and I just thought I would create a quick video just to look at the cockpit views and how you set them up. Now if you have come from X-Plane 11 like myself and like a lot of people you'll be familiar with a very very good cockpit uh, control system and how it was all set up. Now it's slightly different on this uh, but if you do want a similar setup to the camera system from X-Plane 11 and you want to put that across to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 then this is the video for you. So first thing you want to do then is go to your world map and I would suggest first off you go to an aircraft that you fly the most and we can set the cockpit views up from there. Um, and then obviously any other aircraft you fly you can rinse and repeat after this. So I'm just going to choose the A320 and I'm just going to park it at a ramp and I'll see you in the cockpit. Okay so we're sat in the A320 and we are going to save some custom camera views and make it easier for us to navigate around the cockpit. So first of all let's have a look at the basic control. So left, right, up and down on your num on your arrow key sorry will move you about the cockpit. Hold down the right mouse button and you can turn around and look at the cockpit. So they're the basic controls that are out of the box. The thing that's missing for me is, yeah, you can zoom in and out using your scroll wheel on your, on your mouse, but the thing that's missing for me is the comma key and the full stop key or the period key if you're in the USA. Uh, that moves you forwards and backwards so we're also going to set up that but first of all let's take a look at how we actually set up our custom view so if we press the escape key and by the way um, we're going to be using the number pad on the right hand side of the keyboard if you've not got a number pad on your keyboard then I would highly suggest and highly recommend you go and get yourself one of those keyboards if you don't want to get a keyboard like that, then you can get a plug-in USB number pad on Amazon. There's a couple of links below in the description. Um, go and check them out. I do highly recommend that you do that for your views. So we've pressed Escape, we're into Controls. And I've just set up a new profile for the keyboard. Obviously, I've set up all my views already. Um, that's in my... Uh, keyboard profile there so we'll go back to the video test uh, profile which it's got it all as default so first thing I want to note about this particular setup is the filter down here on the left when you come into the f when you come into the controls always always click on all because you're gonna miss out on some of the configurations and some of the settings because of course if you've got it on assigned it's not going to show you stuff that isn't assigned so just a quick tip there, when you come in and do anything within this uh, screen, always click the filter on all. And I really don't know why that doesn't come in as default. Um, when I come into this screen, it should automatically be on all. It shouldn't be on just a side. But anyway, I digress. Right, so we're in controls. Make sure you're on your keyboard because all of these are clickable across the top. And we need to go to the camera system. We then need to click on the cockpit camera and you can see we've got two things here. We've got the load custom camera and if we scroll down we've got save custom camera. Now you can see the inputs you need to make. You need to hold control and alt and three and all this sort of stuff. Well you, you don't want to do all that. You want to make it as easy as it as it possibly can be for yourself. Um, obviously you <laughs> You're controlling an aircraft and you want your views quickly, um, you're on your own, you want an easy and simple solution to do this. So from X-Plane 11, again, if you are from X-Plane 11, you'll be familiar with this. Um, if not, maybe it's a bit new to you, but this is a fairly simple system that I'm going to show you. So to load the custom camera, first of all, we're going to look at the custom cameras. So this is to actually load in a custom camera view. So we're going to save a view when we get back into the cockpit and then... I'll show you how to quickly load them. So instead of all this control number, alt one and all this, we're actually going to click on it and we're just going to make it zero. So zero on your number pad. Now it does say, it does give you a warning saying it's already used somewhere else. Do you want to bind it anyway? Yes, you do. We will go back and look at this afterwards because this is actually very important. And looking at forums and social media, a lot of complaints about this, how... 
uh, people have <laughs> they've binded their different views and when you press sometimes if if you well let's put it like this if we don't go in and look at this and delete some of these uh, default bindings then when you click a camera view you're also going to uh, control uh, something on the aircraft and that's what people have had a lot of problems with and it is a bit finicky I do agree um, but this is what we've got so okay so we're gonna go down on the custom load the custom camera view so we're gonna number pad zero for custom view zero and we're gonna go down and just match it with the camera view to the number so we're gonna go down click on this one validate click on this click on two validate and so on and I will spare you me doing all of that okay so the load custom camera configuration has been done I've just gone down like you've just seen and clicked on it and press the number pads number that corresponds to the camera number so you can see uh, load custom camera six number six so fairly simple so far next we are going to go down to the save custom camera now when we get back in the cockpit we'll be using this to save our views and then we can bring them back up by pressing number pad four number pad two etc so again same thing we are going to go in we're going to highlight um, the previous binding and what we're going to do we're going to hold down control for this one and zero so control and zero to save the actual camera view that you want again it's already got a binding don't worry about that for now uh, we'll sort that out later so all we're going to do is validate and again I'll just do custom camera one for you control and one obviously validate it is a bit finicky guys I do uh, it frustrated me for a while I had to spend a good couple of hours uh, with all of these settings but you do get used to it after a while so custom camera two control and number two and again I'll spare you you having to watch the whole thing of me uh, going through all the camera views okay then so that's all of those done um, you can see then to load the custom camera you're just gonna press your number pad 0 to 9 and to save them you're gonna press control and number pad 0 to 9 now when we saved all of these of course we had alert saying that these specific bindings were already saved to other things so next thing we need to do then is we need to go across to the search and we need to search by input or we can use the drop down menu which I probably suggest is going to be a better option so first of all then we need to go down and we need to find number zero so number pad zero and you can see it's assigned to a bunch of different things so you can see where I've added on load the custom camera zero so that's fine slew mode that's fine what we want to look for is anything that controls the uh, flight control surfaces and we need to actually get rid of that so you can see here that I've got the we've actually got the number pad uh, zero and control and number pad zero so that's how we save our view and then select our view so we need to get rid of both of these controls now if you are controlling your aircraft via a keyboard then commiserations um, you probably don't want to follow this video um, because uh, maybe that's gonna mess with the control of your aircraft I don't know but for most of us we're using a yoke or uh, a joystick or something like that I've just got a cheap a cheap uh, Thrustmaster again link in the description it does the job really well I'm waiting for the uh, the TCA Airbus uh, double pack of the joystick and the throttle quadrant to come out I've got that on order from Amazon again link in the description below if you want to check that out so again what we need to do then is make sure these are deleted and to delete them it's a little bit finicky yet again so click on the actual input you need to click on the input um, on the on the square and we need to clear it now then we need to validate it so that's actually gone now a lot of people what they're doing is you'd think if you click on clear current input it does actually go and if you validate it you think it's actually gone but it's actually not although it has gone there let me just try uh, uh, the next one 
uh, you need to actually make sure that it is gone out of there um, so that's just a little tip for you so let's go on to number pad one and again really annoying um, that you have to scroll all the way back down it doesn't leave you from where you were left off um, so this time it's number nine so that's okay that's okay um, and that's okay so we just need to work our way through uh, both of these different bindings so on the number pads 0 to 9 and the control and number pads 0 to 9 so let's just uh, do another couple of ones and I'll show you exactly what I mean so if we choose number 8 again we don't want anything for primary control surfaces so if we go in and clear the current input you can see that even though it's disappeared even if I click on here clear current input and validate that oh, it has actually gone now I don't know what's going on <laughs> very finicky guys uh, but basically all I'm telling you here is make sure everything that you've assigned to numbers uh, 1 to 9 and control plus numbers 1 to 9 uh, doesn't also have a binding for primary control surfaces because otherwise you're gonna have some problems so let's just do the next one uh, we'll go to number seven. Um, drone is fine. Um, all of these, all of these are fine. We just need to get rid of them from the control surfaces. Clear current input and validate. We'll go to six. Uh, they're fine. We definitely don't want that controlling that input. So validate that. And there you can see we've also got control plus number six. We need to get rid of that as well. So number five, uh, drone's fine. Flight control surfaces, get rid of that. Slew is fine, lights, that's fine. Number four, we need to get rid of that, that's a control surface. And we need to get rid of that, that's a control surface. Number three, so that's fine uh, because there's no control surfaces also binded to that one. Number two, yeah, we definitely want the elevator up out of there, so clear the current input and validate it. And there's nothing else there. And number one, I think we've also missed zero, haven't we? Number one, we want to take it out of there. Have we done zero? Yep, yeah, looks like we have. Okay, so we've set up our control plus number pad and number pad. Um, let's jump into the cockpit and see how that translates. Remembering, of course, to click apply and save. That is crucial. Make sure you click apply and save uh, before you get back into the cockpit. Okay, so we're back in the cockpit now and we are actually going to select our views uh, save them and then we can load them again with a press of a number pad button so first one for me is just this view here so I like to get myself around about here um, and what I'm going to do I'm going to press control and zero that will all if when I press zero in future that will always bring me back to this view um, next view I always have number one as sort of looking down at the FMC so if I zoom in a little bit and I need to click on, well, I need to hold down control and one. PFDs, I'm going to do control and two. And I'll do the center pedestal, control and three. I'll have a look at the overhead panel. Just using my keyboard and mouse just to get a nice view. 
And I always do that control and seven because it's at the top of the keyboard. So there's four, four or five views um, selected, saved. Now, if I press zero, I go back to the preset which I've saved. So very easy to do. If I press seven, I'm going to go straight up to the overhead view. If I press number one, I'm going to go to the flight management computer. Number two, I go to the PFD. So you can set, set and save your views however you want. Uh, for example, I always like the number four and number six. I like a left view and a right view out of the cockpit window. Um, again, control four for that. I'll move across to the first officer's seat. Control six for that. So if I go to, if I click on now number pad four, it goes to that view. Number pad six back to that view. The biggest key zero, default view for me. Okay, there's just one more setting I want to take care of, and that is moving forwards and backwards. So we can move side to side, we can move up and down, we can zoom in and out, but we can't move forwards and backwards, or, you know, there is a binding for forwards and backwards, but it's just not very good. So again, we're going to press the escape key, go into controls, again, go to the filter, make sure all is selected, make sure you're on your keyboard, and we need to have a look at the camera for the cockpit. So again, go to camera, cockpit view, and what we're looking for is translate cockpit view. So you can actually type it in there if you want, um, but I'll just have a look uh, down the list. And you can see translate cockpit view backwards and translate cockpit view forwards are there. But again, it's all this right, alt and down, right, alt and down. You don't want that, so let's change that to the easy way of the comma key and the full stop key. So first of all, we need to delete all of these bindings. So go in, clear the current input and validate. Clear them all out and we can then enter in our new binding. Okay, so to go backwards then, I always choose the full stop key or the period key. Um, because that's after the comma, so you, you're sort of you're looking at your keyboard. The first one's forwards, the second, the next one next to it is backwards. So easy to remember. So backward. If I go in and click the period key, again, um, it says it's already binded. We can go in and change that. So we'll just validate that, and the forward key, select it, click on the comma validate that so let's just search for that input and let's just move the uh, take out the other binding so it was the period key or the full stop key we'll go all the way down and find the full stop key and all we're going to do is we're going to just take that out of there um, so select it clear the current input and validate apply and save get back in the cockpit and now using your comma key and your full stop key, you can go back and forwards. So again, just a very, very quick video um, just to show you um, an easier way of doing that. I don't understand all of this alt and control rubbish. Uh, we don't want to do that. Um, so I really hope that you found this useful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up um, icon. Give me a thumbs up. Um, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. I'm not too sure if I'll be making any more videos. Um, it was just a big frustration to me and to the community, so I thought I'd do a quick video. Anyway, enjoy the, the new views and your save views. Uh, again, I hope you found this helpful and useful, and I might catch you soon, I don't know. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.